There's no escape! Hey, it's a uh, push, not pull. In the game of No Escape, you are attempting to escape a space station that now has deadly gas leaking into it, and there's only one escape pod left, so only one player can win the game and escape No Escape. So this is all the components here of the game. So there's a variety of different uh, cadets or, or space people or astronauts or whatever you wanted to call them. You also get a variety of tiles here. I've put them in a couple different stacks here. You can spread those out around the table so that way everybody has access to a stack and easily easy to get to, I should say. We have this starting board here, which is the very beginning of the space station and the space station will continue to grow as the players add more tiles to it but there is a two to four player side here and then the other side has this four to eight player side if you're playing with more players i'm going to go ahead and stick with the two to four because i'm going to set up for a three player game and the object of the game here is to go off of the board so on the edges here there are places where if you're able to go off of the board well that means you have found the escape pod and you are off the space station and you have won the game but as i said here this board will be expanding as more and more tiles get placed as the game goes on so let's go ahead and get set up for a three-player game so i'm just going to go ahead and use these middle three player tokens here and they're all going to start right here in the middle of the board also you're going to set out these new path tiles these are little like quarter tiles or third tiles actually and they are both the same on the front and the back there and you're going to set those out for everybody every player is going to receive three energy tokens and those are going to be on their green sides face up they're red on the back here showing that, that you've used energy there are also um, a couple of dice in the game and the dice have the numbers one through three on them twice so they're basically a d3 so the highest that you can get is whoops the highest you can get is six and the lowest that you can roll is a two every player is going to draw three tiles from the shuffled stacks and once you have that set, you'll determine who is the first player, whatever means that you want to. And then you'll go ahead and you will start No Escape. So, let's look at the tiles that I have drawn here. So, we have a tile here that has three spaces on them that go in a straight line. We have another tile here that has four spaces that go in a straight line. And we have an action tile here which says equipment locker, everyone draws a tile. So on your turn, if you have one of these action tiles, you can go ahead and play that at the beginning of your turn. So you know what, I'm gonna be nice and I'm gonna let everybody draw a tile. So I'm just gonna go ahead and discard that tile. And every player gets to draw a new tile. So I drew this little T section tile here. So, uh, once that was resolved, then you must play one of the tiles, one of the path tiles from your hand. If you don't have any path tiles in your hand, you have to discard your entire hand and then keep drawing tiles from one of the uh, stacks here until you find one of these tiles and that's, that's what you're going to place down. So let's see here. What am I going to place? Um, I'm not really sure where my opponents are going just yet in the very beginning of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place this T section tile here. So in the beginning, you don't really have to worry about too much, but there's legal placement rules that I'll go to in a second here. But let's go ahead and let's place this tile right here like that to make that path just a little bit bigger. So now that I have gone ahead 
and placed a tile. Then I have an option if I want to use one of my energy tokens. Now what the energy tokens do, those will add one to your dice roll, and if there's any other players in your path, you will jump over them. Normally, if there's a player in your path, you push them along. So if you're close to an exit and they're close to an exit, you can actually push them off the board and they would actually win, which is really not what you want to do. So being the very beginning of the game, I'm going to go ahead and hold on to my energy. I'm not going to go ahead and use any of those tokens just yet. So after I've decided if I'm using those or not, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll the dice and go ahead and give that a roll there. And ooh, three and three, which is six. So now I have to decide which path I want to take. Well, obviously I've made that path longer, so I don't want to take that path. I'm going to start on this path right over here. Now, the direction that your little guy is going in matters. So if you look here, this is his back that's showing his little, his little uh, oxygen tanks there in the back of his spacesuit here. So you're going to place him moving forward onto the path there, and you're going to go ahead and move the number of spaces that you rolled here. So I rolled six. So we're going to go one, two, turning, three, four, five. Oops. And when you get to a section where you have multiple paths to take, you turn in the direction that you want, and let's just go over here, and we will go one more space. So I am now facing downwards. Once you have done that, you will go ahead and draw back up to three tiles. So let me zoom out here. I'm going to draw another tile here. And then we will move on to the next player's turns. So let's just say, um, well, the blue player, you know, didn't like that I'm trying to get out, get out so they would play that tile there on their turn. So just go ahead and roll those dice here. Well, they only got three. So they're going to take this path right here, and they're going to go one, two, and three. No should be one, two, three. Yeah. Whoops, I went too many spaces as well. So they're going to go there, and they're going to face in the direction that they want to continue moving. So they all obviously turn like that. The yellow player knows that, well, I am next as the green player. So they want to make my path even harder to go through here. So they are going to go ahead and they're going to place another tile in my way, making my path even longer. They are going to roll up. They also got a three. And let's say they are going to go, oh, they're going to follow the blue player. So they're going to go one, two, and the third one pushes the blue player along that track right there. So now it'll come back to my turn here. So, beginning of my turn, I happen to have drawn another action tile here. And this one says, unlock hatch. Place a new pathway onto a legal unoccupied tile. So that means I get to place one of these little uh, third tiles here. Now, a legal pathway for these are only a forward or a straight line with just one path on it, or a path with three on it. So, you wouldn't be able to play it on a tile with just two spaces on there, because it doesn't quite line up properly with that, but it will line up, you know, with a three or the single one, which I just misplaced, but, oh, there it is. So you can place it like that. Well, I do have a tile that I can place that on, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place that right there to give myself an easy way out of this ship. 
So now I have to decide uh, which of the, my two tiles that I want to play here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and use this four tile here, so that gives them more spaces to go. So I see that yellow and blue are trying to make an escape here. So I'm going to go ahead and place that right there onto their path, making their path a little bit longer. Now I only have one tile left in my hand, so I'm going to draw up two more tiles here. Now I drew uh, this tile here. So let me go ahead and explain these special symbols on these tiles. So the one I just drew here is the control center. Now the control center, um, if it is a white control center, when you move on to it, you can go ahead and place one of these new path tiles in a legal placement or you can go ahead and fill up your energy if you've used any of that energy. But also note, that's a dead end. So when you reach a dead end, you have to go ahead and turn around and try to uh, go back a different path. And that is your only opportunity to turn around unless you draw one of the tiles that say that you can turn around. Because you're in, in cramped quarters, so it's kind of hard to, to do an about face. If you look on the base board here, there is the yellow version of that. And that does something a little bit differently. With that, you can only refill energy. With, that, uh, with a yellow space, you cannot use or put out one of these special tiles. There are also some of these teleport tiles. And again, there is a white and yellow version of them. With the white version, you can go to any other teleport space, whether it be white or yellow. Now with the yellow spaces, those can only be traveled to. So you can't go from this yellow space to wherever this one ends up. But you can go from here to there if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and take the blue player's turn here. So the blue player doesn't want to use any uh, any action tiles or anything like that. They're just gonna go ahead and they're going to roll the dice here. Zoom out a little bit here. So they're going to roll those dice here and they got a five total. So they would go one, two, turn, three, four, and five down that path. And then they get to place a tile. Now they know that the green player is gonna, gonna be a while as they go down that path, so they're not too concerned, but they're going to start making this other pass a little bit more tricky. Now, let me show you something about legal tile placement. So let's say they have this tile right here that they wanted to place. Well, legally you have to be able to place it so that the path will continue and will never go um, into another tile. So for example, with this one, they couldn't legally place it like that because it runs into something and that isn't legal placement. If they wanted to place that they would have to do something um, like that right there. If they wanted to. What they could do if they were tricky and they wanted to actually go for the green player they could actually play it right here which would definitely make their path a lot longer. Or they could play that wherever else they wanted to as long as it is a legal a placement. So let's go ahead and take the yellow player's turn real quick here. They're not going to play anything special here, but they are going to go ahead and they're going to go ahead and use some energy. So they're going to take one of their tokens, flip it over to the red side saying that they have used that energy. They will add one to their die roll here and they'll hopefully catch up with that blue player and be able to jump over them before they escape here. And ooh, they roll double threes, which means they have seven, and they get to jump over the blue player. So they will go one, two, three, turn, four, five, six, seven. So now they are in front of the blue player right there, and they are that much closer to victory. You will continue the game. Yeah, you will continue the game until one of the players manages to go off of the board. If they manage to make it off the board, they have won. No escape. Punchboard Media.
where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com. So that is No Escape. This is actually a really fun game. I really enjoyed playing this one. Um, it says 30 minutes in the box, but so far the games have gone a lot uh, shorter for me. Um, I have played with uh, three players, and I think that's like a good spot to have that in. Um, two players is fine for this game, but with a three-player version of the game, I think it makes it so that way there's always somebody to chase. And it usually ends up that you're looking ahead and you're looking at, oh, okay, you have this many spaces, and you're always trying to, whoever is the next player, trying to make sure they're not going to win on their turn, and then you go to the next player, just to make sure that there's always enough tiles in front of them, so that way, if they end up rolling high, remember, seven would be the highest that you could probably get. I don't know if there are tiles that tweak that at all, but seven would be the highest that you can get, rolling the two threes on the die, and then using the energy, so trying to make sure they have at least seven tiles in front of them is always something that's a good idea to try to do. And also, whenever it is your turn, both of your opponents are teaming up on you. You always have somebody, you always have two people, at least two people against you. Of course, in the higher player count games, you're going to have a lot more people against you. And just, just trying to figure out how to get out of this uh, situation is a lot of fun. So if this looks like something that you would enjoy, down below I'm going to have a link for their Kickstarter as soon as I have the information. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and help support Cloak and Maple. Down below, I have links for my Patreon and Pod Pledge, where you can go ahead and donate to Cloak and Meeple. You can also go over to geekygoodies.com and buy a Cloak and Meeple shirt, or just go ahead and like this video and make sure you're, subs you're subscribed. And thanks for watching. Oh, quick, come on. Uh, no! There's no escape! <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs>